So as mentioned in previous video, we actually the design considerations for any products are all these seven considerations. And the case studies for them in our case now is a boat propeller. Okay? It's more on corrosion resistance and economy of manufacture. Alright, because boat propeller because uh it has to to resist any corrosion because you are operating in the water. Alright, so there's sea water, your water will go into the composite and will spoil it. Alright, so you need to protect it uh, well enough. Alright, and while while protecting or while having a good good boat propeller, you also need to have a, a good economy of manufacture so that you can cut costs or in, in a safer way. And therefore, um, just visually la, three blade propeller. Alright, three blade. That's all. Okay. And then, I think you can read yourself. Polyurethane coating to resist erosion. So above them, above this this uh coat, um so called uh, propeller, you have certain poly polyurethane coating. Alright. So the purpose is to resist erosion. Is that um you have your surface over here. This is the surface of your propeller, for example. Your a long time when you because you are hitting the water. Every time you spin, you are hitting the water. Alright. There will be water splashing. So when you hit the water, because the water has certain, is, is, a, is a form of a liquid, so there will be a certain uh, abrasion acting onto the propeller. So this is the propeller. A long time there may be erosion all over here. Alright, because the wa different wa because when you spin, the water will actually hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, then that you could actually wall it out. So your propeller may actually spoil. So this is the thing that uh, they prevent erosion, so they actually use poly polyurethane is pretty cool and therefore let's take a look at what is the cavitations phenomena all right which is yeah like I've, after i see this i was like wow if a propeller spins quickly it leaves a trail of bubbles behind it as the bubbles pop they make a lot of noise these bubbles are not filled with air but with steam the steam is produced by the seawater boiling. It is a well-known fact that water boils at 100 degrees centigrade. However, few people will know that at different pressures, the water will boil at different temperatures. If you increase the pressure, as in a pressure cooker, for instance, then the boiling point of the water increases. Hence, the cooking is more efficient. Few people will know, however, that at reduced pressures, water will boil at lower temperatures. I have here a vacuum pump and I'm going to turn on the vacuum. This flask here contains water and we have it connected to a pressure gauge and we're reading at the moment approximately 15 pounds per square inch which is one atmosphere. I turn on the pump, you notice the pressure dropping immediately and as the pressure drops as we approach zero bubbles start to form and the water starts to boil. So here we are at room temperature, but at a significantly reduced pressure, almost, almost a complete vacuum, the water is now boiling. Water boiling at 20 degrees centigrade at almost zero pounds per square inch, a remarkable phenomenon, sir. When a submarine's propeller turns quickly, an area of low pressure is created on the blades. This lowering of pressure causes the water to boil without heating up and produces bubbles of steam. This is called cavitation. The formation of those bubbles is dependent on how fast we rotate our propeller. So the faster we go, the more risk we are for cavitation. The Pennsylvania's propeller design is a closely guarded secret. But the basic principles of a quiet running propeller are known. Cavitation only occurs when a propeller spins quickly. Slowing the propeller down reduces cavitation and therefore noise. But slowing the propeller also reduces a submarine's thrust. To overcome this problem, the Pennsylvania's engineers developed a unique propeller with four additional specially shaped blades. These generate large amounts of thrust, but at much lower speeds. 
This way, the Pennsylvania produces almost no cavitation or propeller noise. She is a silent predator of the deep. Okay, so it's like pretty cool, right? And then, yeah, so therefore, um, the bubbles will actually erode your surface of your propeller. Okay, and uh, I'll not go through the loading part because bending and torsion, you know, because you are hitting the water. Alright, yeah, in, in the water, the water dynamic is acting, is trying to bend the propeller also, is trying to tor. Torsion means like, or uh, trying to, to, to twist it. Alright, trying to twist it. So it's more on the torsion part. So, yeah, how the water will tor, tor it. Uh, yeah. I think when you spin, the, the torsion will be at the this side. It's trying to, to go in this side. Hopefully you can understand. So this is the, the blades. So it's trying to, to the torsion is in this direction I think. So it's trying to bend the blade. So the blade may be bent in this manner. So this is the, the where the torsion is and also the bending. Maybe the bending may be over here at this side. There's some bending. I don't know lah. At least you get to visualize how it works. Alright. And therefore you need the root of the blade to be thicker. So where's the root of the blade? So the blade root is actually at the hub of near the near the hub of your of your motor or not your no motor but rather than your propeller. Okay. Uh I should get you give me a while. Yeah, if you take a look, your blade root is actually over here. Okay? So your your whole blade is something like that. Okay. And therefore this is the root. Where after that here over here is the I should draw a different color. So over here this is the hub. And you have another root, another blade, another root, another blade. Hopefully this is pretty clear. Alright. And uh, therefore you want the root of the blades to be thicker Alright, to prevent the bending and the torsion So I believe if this is thicker How will it prevent the, the torsion over here? Or maybe the bending over here I don't know, I leave you to think about it But at least you, you see something la, okay? Then the same thing, la, the, the third one is it is the determinations of the strength and stiffness. So how do you determine the strength and stiffness of a propeller? So normally they will use your your rules of mixture, your all these things again, your sandwich construction analysis, which we have done in the calculation part last time. Failure, same thing, impact load. Alright. And why is it impact? I also don't know why, but you just think not that it's an impact load for for uh, for the propeller also. Eh? Oh sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> The impact load is 6. Oh, okay. So it's a strain deflection. This is for the, the boat propeller. Just now I show you is for the car. Sorry. My fault. Caught eye. So it's a strain deflection. F equals to 6. Okay. So therefore it's a fatigue load. So fatigue is that it's a more on the cyclic loading type of thing. Alright. And therefore uh, it's 6. Factor of 6. So you need to take note of that. Alright. Because you're, you're constantly turning. So therefore the because you're... Turning means that you're something like a cyclic loading. Alright, it's a fatigue because a long time you wear and tear and things like that. So you need to think of that. And then, uh, mechanical testing, hydroelastic stability, water tunnel test. Mm. So take a look at uh, the, the green color line. <laughs> so give it a second, it takes a little while to get going. <laughs> and I'm still playing with the guy here. There we go. You can continue.